So we're gonna try doing something a little, little fun with the API today. And you know, hopefully, hopefully it'll be somewhat fun and interesting, which is we're gonna try live coding uh, an example usage of the Pixie API. Um, and, and we're gonna use a Go API. So it's a little bit, a little bit more verbose on the Python one, but hopefully it'll be it'll be fun to follow along. Um, it shouldn't take very long because you know ultimately the contract is pixel script goes in, data comes out. There's really not that much much code over there, but it'll be a quick, you know, fun, fun life code. Um, so with that in mind, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll just get, hop in and get started. But if folks aren't familiar with, uh, with Go, um, I'll, I'll try to put in enough cues that'll be easy to follow, but please feel free to ask questions. Okay, well, let's try this part of the adventure. So diving in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna switch over to uh, the Pixie UI uh, the live UI and then demonstrate a script. Uh, I'm not gonna actually go into the details of what the script does because uh, we have covered like how scripts work in the past uh, to a fair degree. Uh, but this script over here, basically uh, when you run it, gives you a summary by service uh, and it shows you the total number of requests and error counts. Right, okay. So what we're gonna try to do is actually programmatically call the script from a Go program, okay? And you know, ultimately you can make this all configurable and, and all that stuff. But for now, um, let's, let's go and see how we would uh, do this with Go. Um, before I dive into the details, I will quickly just go over to the package.go.dev, uh, uh, which, um, you know, which has all the high level information about the Pixie API. Um, we are hosted on uh, go with pixie.dev slash pixie. Um, and you know, it's a, it's a relatively straightforward API to use. There is really two main entities. There's a client, so you can construct a new client. And then uh, there's something called a Vizier client, which if you, um, you know, have been following along, we basically have the main cloud and then we call our backends Viziers. So you can connect to a specific backend and then run scripts on that backend. Um, there are a few other you know, objects over here, but for the most part, those are the two relevant ones. And as we you know, dive in, you'll see that it's not, not too bad to use. Um, as usual, you know, we'll be, uh, we're, we're up for feedback on the API. This is a very, very early version. So please, please provide us with, with comments and suggestions. So with that in mind, I'm just gonna switch over to uh, my IDE over here, uh, which is uh, go land. Mm -hmm. And then I will, you know, quickly code up an example, right? So I'm just gonna go and say new project because I'll just start from scratch. Um, apparently I'm gonna create a awesome project too. And um, we'll go with a Go module project. So create that, uh, let's say new window. Okay, perfect. So what I'm gonna do over here is I'm just gonna create a new file, uh, main.go. So let's call, let's call this package main uh, since we're gonna be running this as executable. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is switch over to the terminal and I will go get, um, I will go get uh, the Pixie library. Uh, I have a specific version code in here, but you should be able to use the latest. Um, so when you run go get, it'll add it to the, the Go modules. So we'll take a couple of seconds. There it goes. So now this is, this is available to us to use. I'm going to um, turn this down. Let's see. Uh, you know, when everyone's watching you type, it's, a, it's always a fun experience. So I haven't done this a lot. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll start from here. So what I'm going to do is I'll grab the pixel script first. So this is the pixel script that I got. Um, clearly, this is not valid go, but we can put this inside a variable called uh, pixel. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, not not the cleanest solution right now, but uh, this allows us to basically pass in um, the the pixel script as, as a variable over here. Uh, the next next thing I want to do over here is go ahead and create a new Pixie client. So there's a pxapi.client, right? And then 
um, this thing over here, and actually what I want to use, apologies, is new client. So new client takes in a context and a bunch of options. So as most people are probably aware in Go, um, you have this um, you know, concept of context, which keeps track of all your, your network requests and add in additional information. So I'll just create a background context, but you know, obviously you pass in whatever context you have available. So I'm gonna create a new context. And then the next thing it asked was for the API options. Uh, I happen to know that we need to provide an API key. So I say create an API option with the API key. So we'll just say that's the API key and we'll come fill that in in a second. Um, and then this returns a client and an error, right? So I'll just do the standard, you know, go check for this and then I'll just panic if there's an error. Yeah, I will. It's fine. Absolutely. Um, okay, so- Yes, I'm coming. Uh, somebody, is, uh, can you go on mute? Thanks. Um, so now I need to grab the API key. I don't really want to hard code my API key in here. So what I'll do is um, uh, I will uh, go ahead and grab the API key and I know I'll need the cluster ID from the environment variables um, and that should make things easy. So I'm going to, I'm going to cheat a little bit um, and copy over these two lines. So what this does over here is it looks up the environment uh, variable for PX API key, and it'll put the API key in here. It'll look up the cluster ID and stick the cluster ID in here uh, from this environment variable. And then if they're not set, it'll it'll you know panic. Okay, so now that we have the client all set up, uh, the next step for us to do over here is to um, create a new uh, Vizier client. So what this will do over here is that it'll create a client that talks to a specific cluster. So when we do this, now it says, okay, go talk to cluster ID and it creates a new Vizier client. So we'll just call this Vizier and error, and then we'll do the same error check. Ah, panic, error, okay. So then, you know, without further ado, Vizier has a command to execute a script, right? So execute script takes three variables. The first one is the context. The second one is the actual pixel script. Um, and over time, we'll provide a few other options. So you can pass arguments and stuff safely, you know, without having to do string substitution. Um, and then the third option is this thing called a table muxer. So we haven't talked about what a table muxer is yet, but we will uh, do that in one second. But let me fill out the other arguments in here. So they're, oh, sorry about that, context. Uh, and the second argument is the pixel script. And the third argument is this mux, right? So we know that we need to create this mux. So let me explain a little bit about what a table muxer does. Um, and for that, I think it's probably best for me to quickly switch over to the docs. So what happens in Pixie when you run a Pixie script is that uh, the API is streaming, so it streams over all the data to you, um, you know, live. But uh, a particular script can actually define multiple tables, uh, which are basically like substreams. So what the table muxer does is it allows you to basically accept the table stream. So if your if your script has you know two tables output. You can basically look at the metal metadata and decide you want to only read one one table, or you want to format one table in a different way, or whatever it is. Um, so we'll we'll implement this in a second. But there's a table muxer interface. It says I want to accept this table. The key thing over here is that it returns this thing called a table record handler. So what a table record handler does is it's a type of interface that is responsible for handling table records, right? So as every record comes in. It'll basically call in at once. It'll call handle record with the record every single time. And then it'll call handle done when the table is completed. Right, so it's like a streaming API and you just implement the interface and you get a record at a, at a time. So let's quickly go and implement this table muxer interface. So I will create a new, a new type over here um, that I'll call simple mux. Okay, doesn't really need to have anything in it other than that one function. 
um, which is the simple mux, uh, let's call it S, and then it needs to have the accept table. And it says accept table takes a context and a metadata, right, and returns. So I'll copy and paste that. And then table record handler needs to be imported. Okay, cool. So this is basically the, the interface for uh, accepting a table. So I'm just gonna blindly accept every table now uh, instead of instead of like doing any kind of filtering. Uh, normally, you know, if you're interested, you could take a look at the metadata which has information about the table name, the column information, and all of that, and decide you, you don't care about reading a particular table. So, but in order to accept this table, I need to have another thing that implements the table record handler. So very quickly, I will implement a simple table handler. Um, actually, you know what? Let's call this a table uh, printer. And this also um, in the current state doesn't need to be that complicated, uh, but I will copy and paste a couple of lines, make this a little bit faster. But basically the first function is handle init. Handle init says, I got a new table. Uh, I need to do something over here. Uh, let me just put return nil and we'll come back to this. The second interface is um, handle record, which, gets called every single time a new table record shows up. And then the third type or the third uh, function is handle done, which gets called every single time the table has been completed. So it's been fully streamed. Um, so what I'm gonna do over here very quickly, just to complete this is return the table printer and say that there is no error, right? So now what happens is every time a new table comes in, it'll get forwarded to the table printer. Um, if I want, you know, I could set up a much fancier table printer and, uh, I'm actually going through the details over here. There are a bunch of like pre-built printers that will release so that you don't actually have to think about this too hard. Like if you just want JSON, you could just say, give me JSON and build stream you JSON instead. Okay. So now that we have this entire process set up, let me go back down over here and, uh, create this mux. So I can say the mux is equal to, uh, what do I call this, simple mux? Okay, cool. So now we have the mux. We are almost done over here. Um, and then I'll basically check, this thing returns a results set and error. If error is not equal to null, I'll do my standard panic on error and then one of the things you need to do, as with most of these APIs, is that you need to call close to actually shut down the, the stream and clean up all the allocated memory. And then the last thing we're going to do over here is call um, result set.stream, which will actually start streaming the data. And then I'll say if error not equal to nil, let's just you know die again. Cool. So what we've done over here is executed a script, gotten a result set. We are going to close the result set and then uh, look at the, and then stream the data. So when you start streaming the data, what's gonna happen is this function is gonna start getting called. So we've written a lot of code so far. Let's go ahead and actually try, try running this and see what happens before we you know, move, move any, any further with this. So I'm gonna bring up my terminal here and I'm going to very quickly export my variables while no one is watching this. <laughs> um, so I have my environment variable set up. So I'm gonna do go run main.go and then we'll see that it'll compile. It'll take a little bit of time the first time because it's gotta build all the, the dependencies. Okay, well, nothing happened. So there are no errors, uh, but we also got, got nothing interesting. Um, and that's because we're not doing anything, right? So I'm gonna very quickly put in a printf over here and say, got table init. Um, and then you can say something like metadata.name. And then I will run main.go. 
And it says, look, I've got table in it for this table called status. So let's make this a little bit, a little bit better um, by basically going over here and adding in a print for the column names. So all the column information is in this metadata. So now we can go ahead and just print this out. Um, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a little bit lazy over here and uh, do a uh, core person's formatting on uh, this string so that it always, uh, it always pads it. This way it'll be a little bit easier to read when it prints out. Um, now let's see what that looks like. So now it says that there is a service, total request, and error count. So if you remember from the user interface, those were the three columns that we saw. And that's the column names that we filled out over here. Cool. So the last step we need to do is actually implement this handle record interface. And handle record returns a type of record. So um, this might be a good time to spend like I don't know, 30 seconds on this. And I don't want to get into too many details, but the API is pretty strongly typed. Um, and there is this package called types, which actually defines all of our various types. So every type that's represented in Pixie has a specific type built in. Um, and then there is this interface called datum uh, that basically defines a whole bunch of things on, on, on the type. So the thing that it defines over here is a string. So there is a function that always returns a string representation. Uh, then you can get the data type and the semantic type and a bunch of, bunch of other things, um, which you know, we don't need to get into that right now. Um, but if you call string on this interface, it'll always return like the canonical string representation of the data, uh, regardless of what the underlying type is. So with that in mind, let's uh, go back here. And then what we can do is this data is row based. So we can just go and print out a single row, uh, R dot data. And then we just say print this out. Uh, I'll do the same thing over here. So it always uh, formats nicely. And then I'll say print out the string representation. So without having to do any typecast over here, because it's using the interface, it'll just print out the string string representation. And then I will go and uh, put in the blank new line. And then we can run this. Oh, there it goes. Being a little bit slow. Um, there you go. So this is the data that was in the UI, and now it has shown up in the API. Um, so that is actually it for the live coding demo. There are a few other things that the API can do, but you know there, there are plenty of examples online to look at, um, along with documentation on our website.